Hello, I'm Sarah Hyland, and I am a puberty survivor. Today's episode of Lady Parts is dedicated to the young ladies in our audience still trying to figure out what the hell is going on with their parts. Puberty can be tough, but we're here to help. Let's talk about all the things you're too embarrassed to talk to your mom or your BFF about. Please welcome to our panel our OBGYN, Dr. Sherry, and this week's guests, actress, musician, and chief brand officer of Vita, Hilary Duff, and actress, Ashley Benson. Hi guys, thank you Hi so guys. much for joining us. I want to talk about puberty. You know, we've all been there at some point in our lives, so what was your first period like? I went to an art school, and so I was uh, in my dance period, and literally period <laughs> but um no I just all of a sudden felt like I I don't know peed myself or something and I ran to the bathroom <laughs> and I looked and there was just blood everywhere and I was 14 so I was I feel like that's a little late or maybe that's normal I'm not sure but um I went completely red was so embarrassed my mom knew a little bit but then I was like oh I didn't I didn't fully start my period so then for the rest of the week you're like I just have started for the first no, time yeah I was like it's not fully, so maybe it was a mistake, but I would just throw out all my underwear. For me, I was just so embarrassed. I didn't know what to do. I was just stuffing toilet paper in my underwear, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and cried. <laughs> my sister was in LA shooting a movie and I was home alone. And a couple of the neighborhood friends came over for a swim. And I went inside and I went to the bathroom and there was like blood in my bathing suit. And it wasn't a ton, so it wasn't like this massive okay. disaster. But I remember seeing it and being like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, thank God I have an older sister and I knew exactly what had happened to me. But I remember stomping outside with like all of my 12 year old attitude and just being like, leave, leave, you have to leave, all of you right now, leave. <laughs> And then when my parents finally got home, we were going over to my aunt's house for dinner who lived just down the street. And I remember like telling my mom, like, if you tell anyone, I'm going to know, like, don't tell anyone in the family. And I remember like sitting at the dinner table and just feeling like everybody knows, everybody knows, everybody knows it happened. She told everybody. And I remember just like bursting into tears, like crying. It was so emotional. Like it's so scary and it's so like big and like the feelings around it are just impossible to deal with at the time. My first period I got in the middle of ballet class. So I like just ran out of the ballet studio and like into the dressing room bathroom area. And of course, the level of ballet that I was in at that time were those periwinkle blue leotards. Oh God. <laughs> so it was like, you could tell. So I like no. ran out into the bathroom and I just like screamed my mom's name from down the hallway. She just like came running and she, did the makeshift toilet paper pad in my underwear. I was on the swim team. Of course it was in the pool. It looked like I was hemorrhaging out my body. Why was I always told that like water stops bleeding? Is that a myth? Yes, I was told that, that too. That's not true. I feel like I've told so many friends that don't want to swim because they're having a period. I'm like, no, no, just get in the water. It stops it. It stops that, it. That's it's like a blockade. No, that's what I felt too. And like, I don't wear like gross, but like, because I thought that, I've never had the issue where I've been on my period in a pool and I have blood out and I've had no tampons, but I, I have not blood. So I don't know, maybe it's just because I tell myself, you, you can't bleed. You guys are lucky. <laughs> but you know what you can use is the menstrual cup in the water. It works so well. I can't well. with that. Dr. Sherry, I cannot. You don't understand. I tried to use a moon cup. It took me three hours and you, when I come to get checkups with you, I'm crying and like you're having to talk me down every time just for like a pap smear because I'm like a hypochondriac. But I tried it and I had to have my friends, I was laying on the couch with my legs spread up in the air trying to pull it out and it would not come out. And this was last year, by the way, like I was 29. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Why do you think that there's such a stigma around women's menstruation? And how do we, please tell me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it's the way that our generation of parents grew up and how they approached talking to us about it. We were taught to hide it. We were taught to like how to cover it up. We were taught how to like deal with it. I never got taught what the good things to put in my body were to use. And I always like bleeding through a tampon or something or your pants were, was like the worst thing that could have happened to you, you know? And if the guy saw your 
school years are just demolished forever mm -hmm. and everyone's going to talk about you and laugh at you. And so I think it starts now with teaching your children how beautiful your period is and what comes of that later in life. You know, ground zero is puberty. So the sooner you start talking to your daughters, to your sons about the normal words and language, you're educating, you're, they're gonna feel confident and they're gonna be using those terms too and there'll be no more shame. I mean, think about all the euphemisms, euphemisms for the period, right? On the rag, ant mm -hmm. flow, sharks are circling. You know, like the, we have to start changing that conversation. How did you guys learn about tampons? What was your experience like using a tampon or a pad for the first time? How did you figure out how to do it? I was at a friend's sleepover and I was like, okay, I really have to learn how to put a tampon in because um, my mom wanted me to always use pads, which that's just her choice. And again, like being on a show and you know, when you're filming, if you're bleeding out or whatever, because pads are hard to, they're just weird and they're uncomfortable. And I feel like I'm wearing a diaper, so like it just wasn't for me. But I asked my friends and um, they taught me and I was like, oh, it's so easy. I had to put my first tampon in by myself when no one was home and I like made all the all of my friends leave. And I called my sister and she, I had seen her do it before and I used to think it was so cool, which is so <laughs> weird. But I'd be like, oh my God, she is so cool. And she would like put her foot up on the, tam on, on the tampon, on the toilet. Do you guys remember that? Like putting your foot up on the toilet, they told you to do that. I did. I just did like the like the squat. You know what I'm talking well, about. By the way, now who wants to like put your foot on like you have a shoe on your shoes and outside? No. You know, yeah. It's so gross. But it was like I don't know maybe a thing of like the '90s, early 2000s to like kick a leg up and like pop your tampon in. Oh my God, I've arrived. I'm turning into a woman. <laughs> Hillary, you work with the company Vita, which helps to provide women with menstruation tools. What is period poverty? Period poverty is a lack of access um, to products. It's lack of menstrual education. It's not having a, a place to wash your hands. It's not having a proper toilet. It's all of those things. Let's talk about hair on vaginas and legs <laughs> and armpits. <laughs> It's weird, it's foreign. Boys start to make fun of you at a certain age for even having body hair. What was your experience with seeing some hair anywhere for the first time? I think I blocked mine out. I was so creeped out by it. <laughs> <laughs> that's not real, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I remember just one day um, just looking and then it was there. Like it just came out of nowhere and I was like, oh. Just poof. Okay. But I was the same way. I wasn't allowed to shave my legs until I don't know why 14 was the number, but that was the number. And then I started, I got my period at 14, so it worked out. But I was like, mom, I have hair on my legs. Like everyone else is shaving. I was like, I'll just use Nair then so I don't have to, you know, use a razor. But then I also, when I got armpit hair, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Cause I didn't know, like, it was just such a weird thing. But yeah, and I tried to hide that too because I remember my mom, like I was showering and then my mom had noticed and I was like, don't look, like this is, that's so crazy. She's like, well, let's talk about it because obviously you're gonna start going through puberty soon. And I was like, no, I'm not. Like you just, you were saying things. Cause again, I was just so embarrassed. Puberty denial. Sex is everywhere. Now it's so accessible. Our generation, it was purely just shown to us in sex ed. What was your sex ed class like growing up? My experience, I remember just watching a film and that was kind of it. I mean, I went to a Christian school growing up and so it wasn't really explained in the right way, in my opinion. I think a lot of things were kind of hidden and they only made you pay attention to certain things. So I don't feel like I had the proper sex education at all. And I kind of just learned from my older friends about everything and that's who I asked questions to. What were the biggest misconceptions about sex that you had when you were younger? Oh my God, well, I thought the first time you have sex, you're gonna get pregnant. Really? I thought if you can get fingered, you'd get pregnant. I mean, anything touching your vagina, I was like, I'm gonna get pregnant, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, would, I just always thought anything there, I'd get pregnant. So I was always terrified. One thing that was that's a bummer that people don't really talk about when you're younger is that sex is for pleasure too. Not just about like being in love, like you're having a lot of different feelings in your body and a lot of people are different, like ready at different times. And um, I guess I never got taught that it was about like feeling good and connecting with someone and 
you know, I think as a young girl, you get taught like, oh my God, you want the guy to feel good or something. And that's really a terrible mentality to go into like starting to have sex with. So that's probably the biggest misconception that we all had as young women. Cause I do remember being like, it's pretty much just all about the guy. I'm not gonna get anything out of it, but this is much shorter than I thought it was going to be <laughs> in <Yeah>. time. <laughs> Every time I was like, they look like they're doing it for hours on the television. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> or when the girl reacts on TV and you're like, well, I didn't have that experience. I didn't react like that. That didn't feel like that for me, you know? Oh, I would just, I would just make those noises because I was like, those are the noises you make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's like porn, right? That's, that's how the women should be behaving and that's how the guys think you should be screaming just about when you're about to come. Yeah. Dr. Sherry, what are the benefits of safe sex? Just so we all have it out here, just for the people watching to know. Using condoms with vaginal, anal, oral sex, if you're with a guy, if you're having with a girl, you wanna use a dental dam. It protects you, prevents STIs, sexually transmitted infections, and mainly HPV, because most people don't know they have it. So I highly recommend safe sex. Dr. Sherry, at what age should a girl get an OBGYN, and why is it important to develop a relationship with your OBGYN doctor? 10 million women go to their doctor for vaginitis symptoms, and half of them have already self-treated, thinking that they have a yeast infection. It's important that you find an OBGYN you trust at the right age so you can consult with them on everything from vaginitis, STI testing, cervical cancer screening, to pregnancy, menopause, and procedures like AUB later on. We're gonna play a little game called 30 Second Birds and the Bees. So we are all going to give advice to a teen girl, think about 17 or 18 years old, who's watching right now, and you have 30 seconds to explain. I'll go first. Can we put 30 seconds on the clock, please? Okay. Um, Hey, so I really hope that you trust this person. If you don't trust this person at all, have mutual trust, don't do anything, um, but keep continuing on with what you got. Make sure you use a dental dam for beforehand for that fun stuff. Make sure you use a condom for beforehand for that fun stuff. And then when you go in for the <laughs> piece de resistance, I would say just change the condom out. Like why not, you know, just like put on a freshie and then put on a lot of lube because from my experience, it's gonna hurt a lot for you. You want that stuff is wet. I'm done. <laughs> um, Hillary, I'm sure you will be much more eloquent than I am and probably less crude. I got to follow that act of beauty? Jeez, Sarah. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. And go. Okay. Um, when you think you're ready to have sex, first get to know your body. Learn what you like, learn what feels good for you before you go into it with someone else. Um, don't feel pressure to have sex in the moment with that person. If you don't think it's the right person, you could never take away who you had sex with. Your number is just gonna keep growing. You might really not like that person on that list. So be careful and know, and know um, who you're having sex with and that you like them. And that also, sex is about pleasure and not just for them, for you. So, time. That was good. That was really good. I'm like, now I don't know how to follow up. That was all about like the feels and I was just like, get to the foreplay and the penis and the vagina. <laughs> you guys, it's, I'm a mom. I'm like a boring mom. Yours was more fun. And I'm like about to probably start having to have these conversations in real life. Like that's terrifying. Okay, yeah. Ashley, are you ready? Okay. And go. When you're first gonna have sex, A, like you guys said, Make sure to know your body, be comfortable with your body, and make sure you're mentally prepared and that you're not just doing it because all of your friends are doing it, or you feel pressure to give in to something like that because you might be the last person to experience having sex. Wear a condom, make sure that you trust the person and you're not just doing it to be cool. Um, yeah, and make sure to, I mean, as crazy as that experience is to have fun and Again, make sure that you're being pleasured as well as the guy. And Time. I don't know what else to say. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. That was like a combination of mine and Hillary's. It's going after the best, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys, for being here. I had a lot of fun talking to you about puberty, 
first times, first everythings. I love you guys so much. <laughs> love you guys. Hi, it's so good to see you. Love you.